Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about one type of nomenclature, talking about nomenclature of covalent or molecular compounds. We are going to learn how to call the formula of the covalent compounds by their correct name and how to write their formula as well. To remind you regarding the covalent compounds, I'm going to say that we categorize compounds in three different classes, ionic, covalent, and acids. So here in this video, we are going to talk about only covalent compounds. Covalent compounds composed of only nonmetals, only nonmetals. And the attraction between these two nonmetals, we call that covalent bond. So covalent bond is attraction between two nonmetals. This attraction has one nature. We call that each nonmetal is going to share valence electrons. We don't have any idea what does that mean, valence electrons, and how to share valence electrons between nonmetals. But in the next chapters, when we review the identity of the bonds and the nature of the bonds, we will have like this one. For our today class, in this video, we just need to know that each nonmetal shares electron or electrons to make a covalent bond. We are going to know how to identify nonmetals in the periodic table. In the periodic table, as you see here, let me clean it up here. On the left side of the periodic table, we do have the blue color, we call them metals. And on the right side, you see by this color, pink color, so we call them nonmetals. In the border of metals and nonmetals, we have few elements, we call them metalloids. So sometimes you see metalloids can make covalent bond. Sometimes they act like metals and make ionic compounds. So we don't have any unique prescription for metalloids. That is why we focus on only non-metals. Only elements are placed on the right side of the periodic table and we see them in the pink color. As you see here, you can predict that whenever we are going to make covalent compounds, we just need to combine any of these two non-metals, any of these two non-metals. So it looks we don't have too much compounds in covalent compounds comparing with metal they make ionic compounds so number of covalent compounds is significantly fewer than the number of ionic compounds that is why we call ionic compounds salt and we have many salts in our daily life how to work on the naming rules of covalent compounds. It's super easy. I may ask you to pay attention for a couple minutes. After that, you can easily write the name of the covalent compounds. We have a three-step rule. In this three-step rule, it says, name the first non-metal by its element name. So there is no change for the name of the first nonmetal. For the second nonmetal, we need to add IDE ID at the end of the second nonmetal. So it looks we have first nonmetal, there is no change. For second nonmetal, we need to add IDE. Most important part in this three step strategy, it says adding prefixes to indicate the number of elements number of atoms and mono is usually omitted for the first nonmetal we are going to see what is the meaning of prefixes prefixes they are number of atoms if we say 
if we have one atom, we call that mon. So if we have two atoms, we call that di. Same scenario, if we have three, we call that tri, four, tetra, five, penta. So if you have six of one atom, you call that hexa, seven, hepta, eight, octa, nine, nana, and ten, deca. So you need to memorize these 10 first prefixes whenever you are going to work with covalent compounds or molecular compounds. So I may ask you to memorize this table as soon as possible when we are going to work on the practices. So you may pause this video and for a couple minutes work on this, then we are going to continue our video. The reason you need to memorize prefixes because we have several covalent compounds of each two nonmetals. Assume that I am going to combine nitrogen and oxygen. Nonmetal, nonmetal. I call that covalent compounds. So when we are going to combine them in our universe, we may find different types of covalent compounds between these two atoms. One is nitrogen oxide if we have only N and O. Nitrogen dioxide, it means we have two oxygen. Dinitrogen oxide, it looks we have two and we have one. Two nitrogen tetroxide, it means we have four oxygen as you see here. N2O5 di nitrogen, it means we have two nitrogen and pentoxide, we have five. So this is the one example I may ask you to think about that, but you don't need to know how to find the name of these compounds. In the next slide, I'm going to explain for you. But this one, it, this slide, it gives you the reason we need to know the prefixes. All right, I'm going to call the formula is given SO3, and I'm going to call this compound by the correct name. Please look at this example, then you are going to work by yourself. So, non-metal, non-metal. Non-metal plus non-metal. This is the covalent compounds. So, for covalent compounds, we have three step strategy. First non-metal, we write its name, sulfur. Second non-metal, we write its name, oxygen. We add IDE to the second nonmetal. We add IDE to the second nonmetal. So we call that oxide. So we add to the root. So oxygen plus IDE. So we call that oxide. It looks we add IDE to the root. We drop YJ. Then we are going to know how many of each element. For the first one, we have only one mono. For the second one, we have three. So I write try. This is a rule. This is a one part of the rule. We never use mono for first nonmetal. Only for first nonmetal. So we don't apply mono for first nonmetal. So first nonmetal, I drop that. So we call that sulfur trioxide. Right now, I'm going to work on another example. P4S3. We are going to write the name for this one. Please look here, then. This is your turn. I have to say phosphorus and sulfur. Four, they are non-metals, so three-step strategy. First one I call by its name phosphorus. The second one is sulfur. We add IDE, we call that sulfide. So let me write it here. Sulfur plus IDE, we call that sulfide. You may call that sulfuride, but it's better to pronounce sulfide. Then number of each one, four phosphorus, so four, we use the prefixes tetra, and three sulfur, we use tri. 
So the name of this compound is tetraphosphorus trisulfur. Right now, I'm going to ask you to work on these examples and see are you able to get the correct answer or not. You may, you may pause this video and look at the answer after that. Right now, I'm going to work on this. Si is one of the metalloids, and we have chlorine nonmetals. So, in this example, we are going to call that one by the correct formula of the covalent compounds, SiCl4, and we are going to call that one by its name. One, silicon, and four, chlorine. So, the second one always added IDE. So, as you may have the correct answer, silicon tetrachloride is the correct answer. How about the next one? How about the next one? P2O5, diphosphorus pentoxide. Diphosphorus pentoxide. As you see here, we don't say pentaoxide. We don't say pentaoxide. If you have two vowels, you just need to drop the first one. Drop the first one. So we call that pentoxide. For the next one, we have two, we call that di, chlorine, and for the next one, we have seven. We call that heptoxide. Heptoxide, always we drop the first vowel. So we call that heptoxide. Right now, I'm going to ask you to write the formula of the covalent compounds. The example I'm going to share with you is like this one. Write the formula of carbon disulfide. Whenever you are going to write the carbon disulfide or any formula of the covalent compounds, you just need to follow this strategy. Write the, write the formula, chemical symbol, and then apply the numbers. Look at this example. In this example, I have carbon disulfide. So I may say carbon sulfide means S. How many carbon? It doesn't mention anything. So we leave that one like this. And disulfide, it means two. Two for sulfur. So I write CS2. So here in this example, we have CS2. Look at these examples. SO3. I'm going to write the name for that one. So I say sulfur. Then I'm going to say I'm going to say oxygen oxide. The number for each one. Sulfur oxygen. Then we add IDE to oxygen, we call that oxide. Then number for each one. There is no number here, it means we just need to leave that one. SO3, so we add tri. So we call that sulfur trioxide. Next one, CO. I write carbon, I write oxygen plus ID oxide. No number here, I leave that one. No number here, I leave that one. But please remember, always we need to apply mono for the second nonmetal. Because we drop the mono for first nonmetal, we need to apply that one for second nonmetal. So I write that monoxide. Two O's, so I drop the first one. So we call that carbon monoxide. PCL5 and SF6. See, are you able to write the same name for each one, like reported here? All right, guys, I'm going to have a quick review regarding this covalent compound naming rule. Always we have two nonmetals. So, two nonmetals. For the first one, we just need to write the name. For the second one, we add IDE to the second one. Also, we need to use the prefixes. We need to use the prefixes. We use prefixes in the front of the name of the elements. And we never use 
mono for only first one. We never use mono only for the first. Look at the prefixes. One means mono, and we never use that one for the first one method. Die for two, try for three. If we are going to report four, we call that tetra, and we continue like this. As you see here, if we have vowels, it's repeated. We drop the first one. A or O for the prefixes. Look at this example, BF3, we are going to call by the correct name. So we don't call that monobrand trifluoride. We call that brand trifluoride because we never use mono for first number. Look at the last examples in this slide. I'm going to write the formula is given. I'm going to write the name of this compound, P205. Write the first name, second one plus IDE, the number of each one, P205. It means we are going to call that one by diphosphorus and 5-oxygen pentaoxide. We call that diphosphorus pentaoxide. CCL4, carbon, chlorine plus IDE, chloride, one carbon. We never use mono and we just need to remote report four. Four means tetra, carbon tetrachloride. Last examples to check your knowledge, SO2. We call that sulfur dioxide. N2O5, we call that dinitrogen pentoxide. Guys, it's super easy and hope you learned that one, covalent compounds naming group. Thank you for watching this video.